Hi, um, this is Matt. I, in today's installment of Ask the Gunsmith, we're going to continue on uh, the design and how we uh, came up with our own receiver for the Model 89. I dipped into a little bit on the last episode. Um, once we decided we specifically were going to build a gun for the 500 Smith & Wesson, we were initially thought our best idea would be to go with an existing rifle action and just modify it to work with the 500 Smith. Um, the 500 Smith is a uh, high pressure cartridge in comparison to most other lever action you know, cartridges that are, are uh, out on the market. Um, pretty much all lever actions you know, on a traditional standpoint lock up from the rear so you have more distance between your, bre or your uh, breech face and your locking surfaces which does add its own element to stress. Um, the 1886 and the 1892 is kind of where we ended up landing and I'll get how we get there. Um, they are the, typically known as some of the strongest ones on the market, um, but the only currently uh, existing commercial platforms were Japanese ones. Um, they, the Japanese ones were strong enough, but being made in another country, dealing with importation and sporadic production, it just becomes a supply issue more than anything else. Um, we decided to try out Marlins. Marlins a very good, strong action. Um, not quite as strong as the Winchester design. We bought several of them. Um, Marlins usually max out for pressure at around 36 to 40,000 PSI. Uh, the Marlin Express version, they can squeak out about 45, but it's the, you know, they're not made for the 60 to 65,000 PSI cartridge that we were trying to work with. Um, we bent a few, we ruined a few of them uh, in attempting to make them work. Uh, there's just the locking lug would set back, you, you would get excessive head space, you'd end up with cartridge head separations and uh, light striking eventually. With any gun that's going to grow in head space too much, it's going to get to beyond safe and beyond functional eventually, and obviously we didn't want to do that. We decided we were going to try to beef up the existing Marlin design with a with better metallurgy and, and a bigger locking surface, but in reality, the single locking bolt that Marlin uses is just not big enough. There's just not enough surface area there to take that kind of pressure. So we ended up back at the drawing table with the 86 uh, slash 92 designs, um, but because we couldn't get them anywhere else, kind of had to start making our own. So, you know, here we are at making our own gun. It's 80, or the 500 Smith is too large to fit into a standard Model 92, which is the Winchester pistol calibered gun. The 86 is their rifle calibered gun. So we kind of met in the middle of a scaled down 86 receiver size, but a lengthened set of Model 92 internals. Um, the two really large locking lugs um, that both fit recesses in the receiver and recesses in the bolt provided us the surface area we needed to not have that headspace measurement stretch. Um, we do have a really good resource when it comes down the, right down the street here in Cody. We have the uh, Cody Firearms Museum. Um, so it allowed us to go look at the entire progression of how modern lever actions got to where they're at today. Um, in fact, there's a few of our um, prototype examples in the museum. Uh, some you can look at and some that are down in their archives, but uh, we do have guns on display there at the museum. Uh, it kind of shows you how we designed it. We, ha we do have uh, a cage type prototype where we, we laid everything out in order to get the functional reality of increasing the size of the 92 in order to fit the much larger 500 Smith. Um, <clears throat> we ended up, most of our parts are, are made out of a not so normal stain. It's becoming a more normalized in the gun uh, industry, stainless steel alloy that is a lot higher tensile strength than normal gun steel. It allows us to also run higher pressures. Uh, uh, the nitriding process we use on a lot of our parts provides a good surface hardness as well as an internal hardness so our parts don't deform and crush over time. Um, there are other manufacturers that have gotten close to 65 value. There are, there are companies that have done the, five, the 454 Casul which runs a really high pressure too. What we have encountered when testing some of those other ones is they 
they don't have the longevity of ours. Um, they do stretch, they do move, headspace dimensions end up changing over time, which is really a warranty nightmare when you're uh, talking a gun, you, you know, that basically wears itself out too quickly. Um, so the, the reason why ours is a Model 89 is because it's partway between an 86 and a 92. Um, and if you're familiar with those two platforms, you can see the similarities. We use an 86 style gate. Most of our internals just look like really big oversized Model 92 internals um, that allows us to, we've been doing this gun for years, it allows us to do the 65,000 PSI pressure uh, and handle it with ease so that you really can't throw much at this gun that, it, you know, inside safe specifications that this gun cannot handle. So um, that is where we are today with our 89 receiver and uh, uh, we will see you at another episode.